Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemma Red, and today we're going to be talking about ambient red light bulbs versus red light therapy. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of confusion in the market, and maybe I caused it because I started Gemma Red as a red light therapy company, and also moved into making uh, red night lights and red reading lights. Um, you know, and so what I saw when I first launched my panels a couple of years ago was that a lot of people were using our red light panels at night just to light up the room with red light. Um, and it's a good idea too because our panels are low, are low flicker and they're only red light and near infrared. Which means they're devoid of any blue light and green light. And that's also, also a common kind of issue is that people will email me and say, Andrew, you're selling LEDs, but I heard LEDs are bad. I said, well, my, my LEDs are low flicker, low EMF, and they don't have any blue. So that's the thing. People were using my panels as, as night lights and reading lights, and I was kind of like, well, there should be a market there. Like, there's a big gap in the market for these red reading lights and uh, strip lights and night lights and different, different applications of red light. So that way you can use the red light uh, doesn't have any blue, doesn't interrupt your circadian rhythm, helps you relax at night, helps you calm down, and helps you sleep. So, of course, you know, the natural thing to do would be to get more red ambient lights at night. Uh, if you don't want to just use, you know, an expensive panel as your night light, you can use uh, something more convenient, something that's more tailored to the job, whether it's switching out your light bulbs for uh, you know, a regular red light bulb. This is the sunlight LED that I tested and uh, reported out on my blog that is super low flicker, low EMF, uh, it's got a good spectrum. And then we've got the Echo, E-I-K-O, uh, light bulb is this little party bulb. It's also very good. Um, it's even cheaper. And both of them have great spectrums, no blue, no, no green. A uh, little bit of yellow, but otherwise they're a really good spectrum. Um, so you want to use these at night, uh, you know, and, but there's kind of some confusion. You can't just use this type of bulb for red light therapy, you know, because the bulbs are kind of designed to kind of diffuse the light in all directions, be kind of a softer light. They've got these kind of milky filters on them. You can see it's got a, almost a white filter to, to diffuse. This one's got a white filter to diffuse. So that way, you know, the, the light comes to your eyes more softly, you know, kind of more spread out. Um, where you could have this light, well, it's on flash mode. This light uh, is probably a similar wattage to this, but this one we can use for red light therapy because it's targeted, it's aimed and focused, you know, forward and we can kind of press it into the skin and make sure all that light energy is going into the skin. It's giving us that penetration where obviously this one, you can't really get, you're not gonna get much penetration even if you hold it right on the skin, you're not gonna get much benefit from that in terms of photobiomodulation. Obviously the benefits for sleep and benefits to have it as a nightlight are tremendous and you know, you, that maybe that's all you need a red light for. But these start to give you more of that intensity and you know the penetration and they get into your you know that gives you the energy into your mitochondria to function better and that's one of the big issues these days that's why red light therapy is so popular why so many people are benefiting from it because we live an indoor lifestyle we're not under the sun we're not under bright lights we've changed out all the incandescent bulbs for leds and fluorescent and they don't have much red and they don't have any near infrared in generic red red light bulbs, or in generic white light bulbs, right? So if you're living indoors, then you're going to be deficient in this kind of intensity. Um, you know, you're going to be, oh, you know, almost like a vitamin deficiency or vitamin C deficiency, where you get lethargic, your body's not working right, you're not feeling right, uh, you're not sleeping right. You know, maybe it's because we're not getting that intensity during the day. So that's where red light therapy comes in. It supplements that lack of intensity, that lack of being outdoors, lack of being under the sun. Uh, that's why we need, you know, red light therapy.
as opposed to just something at night, you need it to be lower intensity for your eyes. Even bright red light might stimulate you. They might shut down your melatonin. So if you shine a bright light in your eyes at night, even red, that can shut down your melatonin production. So you want to be careful with it. So some people, you know, if you want to use a red light panel at night, you know, you could take something like this, and this can have a clever design where these are lower powered LEDs around the side, and you've got an independent switch for them. But you can see, if I'm aiming at the camera, it's still pretty bright. Um, you know, so some companies like Juve have caught on to this trend that, oh, we added an ambient light mode to the Juves. You know, the, the third generation Juves all have ambient light modes. And what does that mean? You know, it sounds like it's, they're going to dim the, you know, the light output from their Juve panels. So they're going to dim the light output, but it doesn't fix what I mentioned. Lost my cord. What I mentioned, it doesn't fix the fact that, you know, the Juve is still using a focused, narrow beam angle lens. And it doesn't fi that fix that the Juve isn't using any kind of uh, diffuser for their ambient light mode. As far as I can tell, they're just going to dim it and they're not going to filter it and they're, not, they're still going to be focused. So it's not like, you know, some people might use something like this as an ambient light and if you aim it at your face, you're still going to get a lot of glare. What I asked this manufacturer to do was actually to make sure these are as wide as possible, 90 degrees and I had them add frosted lenses. So it's not like a full milky lens like this, it's a frosted lens. And so again, if companies wanna start marketing their panels for ambient purposes, they should be mindful. Otherwise, it's just another gimmick that they're stacking onto their panels. Uh, at least with these, you can get them with the frosted lenses uh, and, and at least you, know, you can kind of buffer out and make it less harsh on your eyes so you don't shut down your melatonin aiming a bright uh, you know, light panel at your eyes. So that's where you know Juve and some of these other companies are starting to kind of muddy the waters. Even, you know, even the premise of Juve that you stand 12 inches away from the panel to get your light therapy, well a lot, of, a lot is lost in skin reflection. And some people are looking at panels like Juve and be like, well, you're just standing in front of light, white light, why don't, or red light, why don't I just stand in front of a red light bulb? And they get confused, and that's where this confusion, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of different layers to the confusion. So, you know, I say, you know, if you want to use a Gemma Red panel or any other red light panel for your ambient light, then obviously you don't want to aim it straight at you and get all that glare, because uh, that's still counterproductive to sleep. You want to kind of aim it at the wall or aim it at the ceiling so that way it bounces off the ceiling and creates a nicer kind of ambient effect right so that way it, the ceiling or the wall is acting as that diffuser because the light's going to bounce off so that's the real trick if you're going to use a panel for ambient lighting not just kind of adding in some some kind of funny modes and overall you know these these are going to be sucking a lot more electricity than, you know, kind of a cheap, lower powered light bulb. So you have to think about like how much money you're going to spend on electricity and if it's really worth it to run a panel as a ambient light versus just getting some simple light bulbs. Um, so hopefully that's kind of clar th clarified some things, explained some things. Uh, you know, maybe I've created new questions or, or not. Um, you know, there's different levels of, of what you need to do with your sleep and you know That's why the, we've got the craze for blue blockers But if you can just replace more of your lights with with red lights Then you might not rely on blue blockers as much and you could just enjoy red lights at night um, So that's kind of the ultimate goal. So that way instead of having to wear glasses You can just have more more, you know red lights and maybe put filters over your screens to block out that blue light um, so hopefully that helps clarify some things that, you know, these aren't necessarily for red light therapy, but they're still very beneficial for nighttime, for your sleep, for your circadian rhythm. Um, so that's why I make, you know, some red reading lights and night lights, and that's why I made a blog about how to get really affordable 
red ambient light bulbs. Um, so, you know, that's, that's where you can go. The red light is an awesome thing. You can use it for therapy or you can use it just as a nice ambient light, you know, that's got so many different purposes and it's been kind of stripped away from our modern lifestyle that most modern bulbs don't have it and you don't get as much sunlight. So it's a good way to start adding these things back in. We're just trying to cover kind of the gamut of how you can kind of layer it into your daily lifestyle. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let us know if you have any more questions. I'll put some links below uh, to what we're referencing. And uh, thanks for tuning in.